herzlich willkommen. This is the, no, no, this is still an English uh, language podcast for now. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, this is Sebastian speaking on the, on the internet because there's a virus somewhere on this planet. So obviously we're hiding in a bunker. I am hiding in a bunker in Switzerland. Well, and I'm there. I'm oh, not worried. Here. I'm not I hiding. I am hearing someone. Who is this? Hello. Who are you? Ah, oh, hey, Sebastian. I'm not hiding oh. anywhere. I'm not that phobic as you obviously are. But uh, for everybody around there, or for anyone listening to our podcast right if now, if you are still this alive, is, yes, if you're still alive, um, <laughs> it's totally safe to listen to us, no matter where on that <laughs> that fear spectrum you sit. Just don't lick the the speaker or the phone that you're listening our podcast on. Just. No, no, Dirk, please. <laughs> <laughs> you did not eat the microphone. No, no, no. Here, I, I'll throw you a cookie. <laughs> okay. Now that, that we established that we are a deeply serious podcast, uh, I, I got yeah, that. Yeah, oh, we're seriously so you... mentally deranged. Yes, so... Well, but that's I... because of the virus. <laughs> I, you can you can get the impression following the current news that the virus is as much mental as it is a serious illness, right? Uh, you could say absolutely that it's a lot of it is psychological, but it's fascinating. I, I we we I know we 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 sp spoke about this uh, before, but I I really I enjoy it right now learning all the details about how how crazy complex our societies really are and what what things we we have in place and what things we have not and well who would have thought the internet is filled with virologists these days everybody is an expert apparently that's good to see as well and maybe if if nothing else then the virus probably is a like a a perfect promotion campaign for science and scientific uh, decision making well at the very least a good campaign for washing your hands that's, uh, that's uh, sure. uh, it's kind of shocking to me though that people have to be told and teach and trained how to wash their hands but i'm very i i'm glad that finally we got around teaching everybody how to wash their hands yes i even saw that at toilets recently that people wash their hands now that's very reassuring i, I had this on my mind and i thought do i say it do i not say it do i say it you said it okay done <laughs> all not, right that's a good go ahead no. Okay. All right. So good transition. Yes, we, we spoke. Easy transition today. Easy transition. Easy. So Easy. obviously, since everybody talks about the coronavirus, we are talking about it too. Of course. Yes. But we're going to make it controversial. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. That that's that's yeah. It comes with the territory. Debating podcast without controversy is a bit boring, right? Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So you old germaphobe. What is the motion today? Tell us. Sorry, you're not old. I didn't say that. You're just a germaphobe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually uh, arrested myself not on the old part. That's fine. It's just, I, if I'm not mistaken, a germ is not a virus, right? It's a, like bacteria. So I thought, I this thought is it's, incorrect. It's everything My that virus, makes you sick, virus right? Phobe. A virus phobe. So are there people that are that say, oh, bacteria is okay, but a virus, that's too tam damn tiny. I'm scared about things that are tinier than bacteria. I don't know. Corner whatever, cases. whatever. So you compulsive, Motion. obsessive, hand washer, what are we doing old, today? <laughs> old, you forgot, you forgot old. Re repeat that with old. <laughs> By now we successfully confused everyone listening to our introduction. So tell us, please, what is the motion today? Confused as to who is sick or who is mentally uh, that healthy. That is not a question, really. Uh, all right. The motion is the motion. Yes, absolutely the motion. And I probably shouted and saturated all the audio. Uh, the world is completely incapable in dealing with global pandemics. Is that even a debate or is it just an affirmation, right? No, it's a debate. Uh, oh, oh, that's the debate for today. Yes. Right. That's the debate so, for today. Yes. Yes. I always forget because it's so obvious what the answer is. The, the world <laughs> is therefore completely incapable. I will defend that, but I'll be second. And Derek, you will be uh, trying to show and prove to us that the world is completely capable, completely capable in dealing with such pandemics. Yes, that's what I'm going to show. You so, as usual, 
two minutes, three minutes, one minute are our rounds. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. We are in the midst of a pandemic. And this is actually business as usual. It may come in the current corona craze as a shock to our listeners, or maybe to some not. Those who follow the news for longer than just this cycle probably noticed, pandemics happen all the time. Viruses and bacteria, for that matter, everything that's flying around there and is capable of making us sick or not, have been around longer than humans or animals of any kind for that matter. And they they attacked us for as long. And yet we are still here. So viruses have never been the end of humankind. We always adopted, we always succeeded. Now, you can say that's too easy, Dirk. Of course, we are not talking about ending the world and ending humankind. We talk about the world, the society, economics and whatnot. Um, but this... This actually is just as resistant as we as a human race are as well. There is an influenza pandemic going on every single year. What, you never noticed? Right, because we perfectly well deal with it every single year. There have been outbreaks of uh, things as crazy scary as Ebola. We dealt with it. SARS. Actually, the, th the reason why SARS never been a thing is because we successfully dealt with it. Uh, there, the list goes on. There are plenty of virus outbreaks and pandemics that we successfully dealt with it and deal with it. And this one will be no uh, no different. The, the current corona outbreak actually is handled pretty well. In the end, we will look back at this and we will be happy to say that not that many people actually died from it. And yes, the reaction right now may very well damage our world economy. That's something people are scared about. But in the end, uh, right now we had we had um, heavy market drops, but we were dropping back to the level the economy was in 2019. So just let's put things into perspective. I think we're doing pretty well. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. Lies, lies, lies. Governments are lying once again. Let's take three examples. Number one, China, where it all comes from. China threatened the very first doctors who reported the first cases of the virus at the end of December. And then, because that wasn't enough, the government delayed their time to action, allowing the virus to spread everywhere as we know now. We're recording this on the 11th of March. Second example, Iran. This probably millions of cases when officially I checked the numbers officially only 8,000 or 9,000 are reported as of today 11th of March there's if you look at the article from the Atlantic magazine from yesterday we're talking about possibly millions of cases this is the extent to which another government is lying let's not talk about Iran and China let's take a, another great democratic nation the United States there has been community spread as we talk in the jargon of that uh, epi uh, epidemic for a long time, and the government was, the government is still making fun, making fun of the virus situation. It will go away with the summer. Yeah, right. You mentioned the stock market. Indeed, it has crashed. Again, the evidence that even the financial markets, not just the governments, but other establishments are also completely unprepared. On the supply side, we're so dependent on factories in China because China has become so important in the, in the last 20 years, we have no backup plan, zero. China cuffs, sorry for the pun, the entire world gets sick and disrupted. We're completely caught off guard. Nothing is ready. Everyone just seems to discover that we don't have enough masks, we don't have enough hospital beds. We're incapable anyway of taking the drastic measures like the ones we're, that we're taking in China, because thankfully the rest of the world is not a dictatorship. I'll go on and on. But in conclusion, I think there is enough demonstration that everyone at the establishment is lying, that people are completely unprepared and caught off guard everywhere. So yes, the world is completely incapable in dealing with such an epidemic. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. You're a fearmonger. 
And you told us in the past, this is what you like doing when you try to win a debate. So, yes, people are scared. There's reason to be worried. And uh, the current pandemic is no joke. I don't question that. But let's put things into perspective. China learned about this outbreak by the end of December in preparation for their new year. They canceled their new year. They shared the information with the World Health Organization right away. We learned all learned about it in January. In February, there were cities on lockdown. In March, we have right now, as we speak, Italy on lockdown. We have uh, we have soccer games played without an audience to watch them. We have major events canceled. I think we are taking decisive actions, even in countries that are no dictatorship. So you can complain all you want. In fact, China, even if they have been hesitant to tell the world... It is now the month three in that pandemic and we have global action and stronger action that I would personally have considered being even possible. I mean, uh, Lufthansa canceling more than half their flights. It, Italy having uh, basically a, a lockdown on the entire country. Uh, global events uh, being canceled when they exceed a thousand attendees. And basically... No matter what country, you have actions like this everywhere and in an amazingly fast speed. I would say this will this will save lives. This already saves lives. We know a few things about that uh, that um, that current virus that actually is also a reason why there are not faster and heavier measurements in place. For instance, um, we know that uh, people dying are mostly those beyond the age of 70. So... Um, some certain things are just not useful if we if we act on it. Certain measurements uh, have to be taken care of. Um, and, well, you always have to compare of the the downfall of whatever action you take. So not every action is useful. And we deal with a relatively lightweight pandemic at this point, which is why we haven't been on lockdown globally, but uh, more gradually. I can totally imagine a really, really heavy pandemic breaking out and being much faster in locking down travel, locking down events, uh, quarantining people. And you mentioned things like the, the masks that are not available right now and the, the, the stockpiling that people do that test the abilities of our, our systems everywhere. Well, things are working pretty well still despite all this. So despite other statements, I can still buy toilet paper here in Frankfurt, despite everybody writing about how toilet paper has been sold out. I've seen in the doctor's uh, office uh, the other day masks be, uh, being available, so that's not true as well. There are outliers, but our press and our communication tends to overstate the things that go wrong and understate the things that actually go well. And I would say, in the end things will have been better than than we w could have expected them to be. So yes, we are dealing well with this. Uh, the world is totally capable. We are not at the maximum level of actions yet. And things could have been done faster if the virus would have been more aggressive. And now on to Sebastian. So I don't want to make people scared. Uh, I just want to emphasize... The key point of the motion here, which is we are not prepared, right? It may not be a big deal as bad as the Great Plague of the Middle Ages or the Spanish flu of 100 years ago, although we don't know exactly yet. No, this is not what I'm going to say. It is, but you cannot deny at the same time that it is, at the, if I'm not mistaken, at least 20 times more deadly than the average yearly flu influenza, in, uh, in other words. You mentioned oh, they reacted when things, they canceled their Chinese New Year. That was 24th of January. The first cases were a month before, and that's a huge delay in acting. One month of not doing anything because of mainly political reasons. And it's the same in a lot of countries, as I have mentioned. Now, you're saying in Italy, they're taking decisive action. The country is, into lock, is going into lockdown, is in lockdown at the moment. But that's only half of the picture. It's not because you're locking down a country that you have enough hospital beds, that you have enough masks, that you have enough nurses, that people are trained. Right? There is no cure. So you can say all you want. You can say, hey, I'm shutting down the airline. 
the virus is still around. People are still getting sick. And we're very, very close in Northern Italy of not having enough beds for people getting infected. And this is going to be the case in the US in just the weeks to come. This is, has nothing to do in terms of the government will. It's just lack of preparation, which is the whole point of the debate. We are not ready. We're not capable of dealing with it because we did not even plan for it. The US government a year ago disbanded their pandemic department. They disbanded it. They thought, oh, we don't need it. That shows how completely inconsequential the government can be. People are dying more in Italy and in Iran than in other areas. And people say, oh, but Italians are older. Hang on, I just checked the stats. Right? People are dying way less proportionally in Japan from the virus than in Italy. Japanese population is older than Italian population. The average age is 47 years old, 45 in Italy. This is bullshit. It's clearly to do with the quality of the health system. And I would rather be go to a hospital in Japan than in, in Italy. Sorry, my dear friends in Italy, but it doesn't have the best reputation. Same, I'd rather be in Switzerland than in Spain uh, when it comes to health facilities. And this is what we're talking about, the lack of capability, the lack of preparation. Two more things, and it's more of a joke, but it's only half a joke, because I always go from fear-mongering, as you're saying, and scaring, to uh, crazy jokes, which are not really jokes, but I'm French. I have a solution. It's the time to go to Mars. See, and I'm ref referring debate number one of two debate from 2016. Or maybe go to North Korea, where Kim, my dear friend Kim, just launched two missiles two days ago while nobody was watching. Must mean that everything's fine in North Korea. Thankfully, I'll close off on this. Even if leaders today are incapable of dealing with the situation, the virus is here to help. If I'm not mistaken, Trump is more than 70 years old. Final statements. Dirk goes first. Why didn't we die of Ebola? Multiple times, actually, we had Ebola outbreaks. Big outbreaks. Even in the middle of Europe, we had one outbreak once, by the way. Because we were ready for it. Why, ca why are we capable of handling the flu season? Because we are ready for it. This particular outbreak right now, if we would debate if it's overreported and the scare of it is blown out of proportion, by the way, I would really, really like to pick the side of, yes, it's blown out of proportion. So we overreport, we are overscared, but when it comes down to it, we deal with it well. And only part of it comes down to crisis management by governments. I do see people being responsible. I do see people staying away from large gatherings, trying to change their behavior so they don't shake hands right now. They try to, to cuff their, their mouth with their elbow instead with their hands. They have all these useful behaviors and they try to protect their, their, their elder population. So all of this contributes to being ready for something like this. And just because we have right now a global reporting of a global virus that spreads does not mean we are not ready to deal with a pandemic. In fact, we are dealing with that pandemic right now. It could be much, much worse. And it's actually much better than you could hope uh, um, if, you, if you look at what this virus theoretically could have done already. Sebastian. In conclusion, I let our audience decide for themselves. Look around you, read the press. Do you feel governments or multiple countries around multiple continents have been straightforward and honest? Ask yourself that question. If not, why? Second question, as you read through the press and you just look around you, and if you get sick, and I'm sorry if you get sick, and I hope you get healthy, go to the hospital. Have you ever been to a hospital even in times of no crisis? I have. It's a disaster. In most countries, it's just full. You're waiting for hours and hours at the various emergency services, and I have unfortunately experienced them. They're, they're completely over, overloaded, overwhelmed, and that's in normal situations. We talk about this all the time in all the countries around the world, and we're talking about rich countries, not even poor countries. Finally, yes, it could be worse, and thankfully it's not worse than already the terrible situation we're in, It's not the end of the world. It's not zombies around. That's true. But it's not, pretty, it's not very pretty, the picture out there, where every 
travel is restricted and people are scared to take a plane and even talking to anyone else. I think there's only one thing that is ready today and completely capable of dealing with the pandemic is the coronavirus itself. It morphs, it evolves, it adapts. It tries to be not too deadly so that it can infect more people and go and jump from one human being to another. Very ready for the pandemic, I, would, I should say. But no, the world otherwise is not capable of dealing with it. You know what annoys annoys me about this uh, the most? Tell me. And it's an argument I didn't pull, but we have right now what? A hundred thousand people infected. Yeah. Seventy percent of them have uh, have been recovered, uh, uh, fully recovered right now. Um, it's like in the remaining thirty percent, we have what three thousand deaths, five thousand. I don't know, something like this. Come on, this is a joke. We have eight billion people on this planet. You make it sound like we are. Do you know anyone having Corona and dying of it right now? I bet nobody no, does. No. <laughs> no, that's not my point. That's not that's not my point. Uh, the yeah, you said the read the press, read the press. Yes, but then then no, you no, basically read I, news the about the minority of people. No, no. The, Yeah, but I, it doesn't mean I don't care about the minority as well. I'm, I'm not here to scare the people who get who are healthy or recover. The problem is the people who want to get treatment, even if it's a, it's indeed a very small fraction. So most people should not be scared. But those who get sick are going to be in deep shit because the problems who people who have severe infections and have to go to the hospital, they will not have a bed in Italy in the days to come. They will not have a bed. So it is the minority, but we're a society. We care about people who get sick, the elderly, the children, right? So most people should not be scared. Why am I at the office today when most people are not? Because I'm not completely scared, even though I have a lung condition. And if anyone who should be home, it's maybe me, right? But I'm not because I'm trying to be rational, exactly to your point, right? Three, 400 cases in Switzerland out of 8 million inhabitants, unlikely, right? And I'm trying to wash my hands, so hopefully I'll be fine. But for those who get sick, Unfortunately, they will not be treated or they will not be able to have good conditions to be treated and they're going to die. And one loss of human life means families, means friends right, who are going to be sad around it. My grandfather is 96 years old. He's in a retirement house. If the nurses are get contaminated, he's not going to survive. Right. So, yes, he's 96. It's not as if he's 60. Like, you know, my, my mom is between 60 and so, 70. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. So, so this is the main thing. And we should be sensitive about this to care about others, not yes. about us because I, we're healthy I, and we can have a debate. Yes. Um, two things here. Your father, 96, may he live long grandfather. until... Grandfather. Grandfather. Uh, sorry. May he live until he's 106 or older. Um, chances are, if at some point he gets sick, a lot of people in that age group die of pneumonia, right? So they get something on the lung and they die from it. Actually, it doesn't matter which virus it is. So right now we count the coronavirus. Chances are that people that die right now of coronavirus, would, uh, they, they were just as vulnerable to any other dangerous virus out there. And we have plenty of those. It's true, but it adds on top. It adds on top. And, and the reason why it adds on top is because you see this with the overwhelming of the of the emergencies at the hospital, the, of the intensive care units, right? It's on top of the existing things. And you don't want to add more people dying if you can prevent it. That's the whole point of medicine and, and cure and having people being, you know, being yeah. careful. I hear the, the thing I, I'm pointing to, though, is um, I don't think you can, you know, you never can be fully prepared to the point that you say, um, whatever the, um, disease comes our way, we have enough beds for them. We have the, all of this prepared because you that can. means... You can, I'm sorry. No, you, you cannot. Can. Look, look what at is Italy. It, what is the number? What is the number of bats you will you 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 Exce willing to have? Hang on, hang on. Look at Italy, northern Italy. I don't know the exact numbers, but I I, I read it yesterday. But roughly, I believe that the per thousand inhabitants ratio of beds in Italy differs from the north to the south. As you may know, the north is usually richer than the south. They have something like six beds for a thousand people. Three in southern southern Italy. That's a concrete measure. I'm not saying you should have a hundred beds or a thousand beds. I'm saying even within a country, there is disparity. What's happening right now is people from the the the, the governors from the southern region that say, "Do not come here, right? Do not come from the north here because you're going to overwhelm our own capacity when we will need them." This is bad, 
right? This is poor planning. This is what we're talking about. We're, I'm not saying, oh, have tons of empty hospitals, bring up a hospital out of 10 days out of the ground, like in, like in China, which is great, great for them, right? But at least have a policy whereby you're, you're distributing your hospital coverage instead of closing down hospitals like we do in France because there's not enough funding. Oh, we don't want to put enough funding, right? So this is, you know, adjusting, not being crazy about putting tons of money when it's not needed. Or, you know, the U.S. government closing down their pandemic department a year ago. This is, this is laughable. I mean, the, yeah. Right. That, can we, can but, we just... I get, I get your point, right? Let's not have an exaggerated response. But I feel that now, and this is why we had the debate, and maybe I'm biased because I was defending that side, I think we're below average of what we should be doing in a normal case. So I think there are multiple ways uh, to, to look at this right now. So the, the point that you were just making right now is our healthcare system is overwhelmed. People that that need or believe they need intensive care right now to the standards of the treatment we have right now, we don't have enough beds, right? In because close, right now, we're close to that. Yes, yes. Because right now, if you go to the hospital and you, you're diagnosed with corona, they keep you for two weeks at least. And you block that bad for those two weeks, with, uh, and, and that is bad. Um, that's not the maximum capacity, though. Um, so by now, they know more and more about that coronavirus. They actually by now nailed, how, or they start nailing how long it's actually uh, uh, infectious. So you don't have to have quarantine rooms, for instance, when you're not infectious anymore. You can, you can manage your baths better. But all of that given, I give that to you. You're right. The, the hospitals are not ready. The, the baths are not ready. We have a health care crisis of sorts. And yes, people may die because of that. Given. If the measurement of being ready for a global pandemic is people that get sick have enough baths, then we already failed. But if the measure is, uh, oh, we are going to come out with relatively minor deaths. Uh, we come out with uh, with uh, maybe something that makes you more, uh, that makes us more resilient in the end. And our response actually prevented people from dying. Then I would say we did a damn good job. Because in the end, if I'm looking cynical at this, um, in a few years from now, if you look at the the death stats. Um, may even be that you don't re really see that much of a corona impact because and again I, i'm very careful i'm it's terrible i don't want to see my grandma die you don't want to see your grandfather die but the fact of the matter is if that if that grandma or that granddad right now dies of corona that's what they are in the statistics with not with a damn other virus they would have died in two or three months from now um, so the, the question really is, uh, the responses we've seen have been pretty drastic, actually, in comparison to what this virus really poses as a threat. Uh, we, have, we have viruses just as aggressive that we deal with and just ignore them just because they don't happen all at the same time. So the difference right now is that this pandemic strikes in one wave instead of spreading out and we have to spread it out. But in, in general, you look at this and say the reason why we haven't put country on lockdown earlier, the reason why we haven't, haven't uh, uh, cleaned out uh, like even, even uh, schools and everything immediately and started spraying everything like the Taiwanese did, Uh, the reason why we didn't do that is because our governments balance freedom and a proportional response with the threat that they pose. It's not Ebola. It's a, it's a yeah, flu. Fair enough. Yeah, you have a point. I don't disagree completely. I'm just saying on a case-by-case -case basis, country-by-country, country, the picture is very different. I think Germans, well, I'm always here to praise Germans. I love German language. I love you. Well, uh, ah. I'm biased. Uh, oh, but, more but, yeah, I think I think Germans. If I look at the rate at, as of today, I think I think maybe it's because the country is maybe also more disciplined, so people are maybe more careful. Um, you have countries like Germany, maybe a few others, where things are stabilizing very quickly. You have another country right now which nobody's talking much about, at least not today or yesterday, since I was reading about it. Spain. Spain is the exact same trajectory as Italy. They have one week. They're one week behind Italy. Why are they not locking down the country now? This is the question I, I'm asking myself, and I do not understand when they have MPs, members of parliament, who are already contaminated, where the cases have exploded in the last 48 hours, more than France now and Germany. Spain has more cases than France and Germany. When France and Germany was competing. Uh, the past few days with my family members saying, oh, yes, we're winning against the Germans again. Yes. You know, and then Germany went ahead and then France is still ahead. Uh, I'm not joking. We're literally cheering, but 
in a kind of dark, <laughs> dark way. That's my kind of humor. And now Spain, out of nowhere, out of left field, comes here, 2,000 cases, beats both of us, just like in football, right? When you think you're winning, the Spanish football team is there. Why, uh, joke aside, why are they not reacting when they see what's happening in Italy? They should put the entire country on lockdown. They should close all the schools, universities for the next month, right? This is again an example of dumbness. You already know what the other countries have been doing. China, Italy, Japan, closing down all the schools, right? I, by the way, I don't know if it's the right measure, but if anything, we want to be consistent. I think people are panicked when they see inconsistency when they do not understand what's going on. Why in France did we say a week ago, no gathering of more than 5,000 people. Two days ago, it went to 1,000 people. As if the virus makes a difference between 999 and 1,001, by the way, or, you know, 4,000 and 2,000, right? It's completely random. You don't even know where it's coming. And people and rational minds like, like ours cannot make sense of it. So I think the problem here is, people, one of the problems, people get, exaggerated scare out of this forget maybe instead of instead of focusing on the essential which is wash your hands keep your distance and that's basically all you can do yeah no licking right? of other people or yeah <laughs> or or devices however, however much you like your audio equipment do not lick it <laughs> yes. right it's a simple good as call that. good call <laughs> but, but other than that I, I i i don't disagree with you on some on some areas right there is i think a, a gradual response i think some countries some areas are able to deal with it, I think just collectively, we're not very good at it. Uh, I think you can look from the economic stand standpoint, you look at the uh, European Central Bank, right, with Christine Lagarde today, right, saying, or, or even yesterday in the US, they don't seem to come to an agreement. They say, hey, we should do something in terms of stimulus to help the economy, right, like reaction, reaction to the crashes, which are themselves a reaction to the virus spread. It's not very homogeneous. It's not very consistent yet. I mean, I, it's it's fascinating, right? To say the least, when you're healthy, it it is like soap opera. Like, what's going to be the next thing? You're looking at the daily rate infections, the rates uh, rate of infection, and you're wondering what's going on. Anyway, it's, sorry, it's, long long no, many comments at the same time. It, uh, you're you're spot on. I do think I said that um, I said that to to somebody the other day, uh, and I actually thought while I was saying it about um, a debate of ours. So uh, we debated about uh, economic warfare, right? Like economic yep. sanction and what. And at some point, um, the one argument I think I made back then was that it kills just as many people as real warfare. It's just not as visible. And in a, deba uh, in a discussion I had with, uh, with a friend uh, the other day, I said, I do believe that the, the economic friction that we right now discover in our globalized world, that will in the end kill disproportionately more people than the coronavirus so Abs that's, that's for like, sure this is like for a, sure. it's Guaranteed. not it's not it's not the rich people necessary and all you said i it's a privileged situation you and i are in we we our job is not at risk we are not paid by the hour we are in europe where we cannot be fired on a moment's notice and we have jobs where we actually can work from home in 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 video conferences and such but there are people right now let's take the u.s you have you have a whole workforce of people that are paid by the hour and are in a country where you will be fired as soon as business goes down. And right now everybody is locking down things, and uh, suppliers cannot build their stuff because they wait for parts coming from China. Um, um, tourists are not showing up. All these things. So this is this is a real death threat to some businesses, and as a result, it will. As I said, um, I do think it will kill people in the end. When Corona is over, we all are breathing in and feeling relaxed. It will still rage, rage through don't, through the market. Don't breathe too much; you may catch the virus. But yes, agreed with you. With one caveat, uh, Switzerland on the on the on the part of the we are in Europe, we're privileged, is actually not exactly in line with the rest of the EU. We can be fired at will here with oh, with wow. no justification. Yeah, cool. Don't tell my boss. Don't no, tell my boss. I will not. <laughs> he thinks you're in Europe. <laughs> he thinks, yeah, it's the same, right? It's the same. It's the same. All yes. the same. All, all Europeans right. are those with the crazy vacation and the crazy uh, worker protection, of right? Right, and labor unions. Labor unions. All union. right, <laughs> let's wrap up. Uh, let's wrap up with a simple message, right? I guess if no one's hearing this, go wash your hands. Now's a good time. 
and stay healthy. I think that I don't think there's much to say beyond that. Stay alive because we need yes. you to listen to the podcast. Yes. And that's about it. And uh, stay tuned because we'll have another episode, not related to the virus, but related to something still related to health in a way. Not in a boring way. It's never boring. You're, I know yes. you don't know what I'm talking about, no, but I don't. don't worry. Me, we'll make the we transition. will have other debates coming up soon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> or, and, All right. and if only one of us starts debating, then we know Sebastian didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, stay healthy, please. All right. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.